Hallelujah. Got your Bibles? How about Ecclesiastes chapter 3? No? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to read that to you, but John 12 is where you want to be. John 12 verse 20 is where you want to be. Amen. And I'll just read to you Ecclesiastes. John 12, are you comfortable? It's been a good week. Everybody say good week. If it was a good week, it was your fault. Amen. All the things that may have come against you, you decided to make it a good week, man. Amen. To press into it. Today after church, my son and I will fly up to Colorado. I know many of you know that they're having a little bit of snow up there. So I'm excited about flying into it. Amen. Just thrilled to take a few days, go see my grandkids and throw them on a snowmobile and, and uh, whoop around Colorado. Before I left, I, I picked up a, a vehicle. And uh, before I left, I, I got on the phone. I told my son Josiah, and with Joseph as my witness. Now you as my witness. Something happens to me, and I don't get back. That car is yours. He said, all right, Dad. Now, you know, that's important. I know many of us don't think about it, but there is an expiration date to your life. And you don't know when it is. Uh, Job 14 says that God set a boundary for all of us. And I know some of you think, well, that's kind of a morbid thought, Pastor. No, it's not. Amen. In my life... I want to make sure things are as smooth as they can be if I, if I depart this earth, because surely I will. As, as, as Jesus, and we're going to read this to you, going to walk it out to you and help you understand it and grasp hold of it. it it's important that you, that you understand that Jesus came here with a time limit on him. Amen. As if the timer on the three-minute egg, or if as when I was a kid, my mom watched him I don't know why they called them soap operas. There was anything clean about them soap operas. But what was it? Oh, they were sponsored by soap. Thank you. That, I did not know that. I'm learning today. But the hourglass as, as uh, the, sands on the, the sands on the seashore of time, so is the days of our lives. That's it. That was the one. All I remember is Gilligan's Island. That was my 4 o'clock soap opera, amen, that I got to watch every evening. So it was important to me. The doctor told a patient of his that came in, had some issues, and, and uh, he called him up after his test, and he said, hey, man, I, I got bad news for you and even worse news for you. And uh, he said, okay. He said, well, first, what's the bad news? He said, well, the bad news is, according to all our tests, you've got 24 hours to live. Oh, Doc. He said, well, what's the worst news? He said, I was supposed to call you yesterday. <laughs> How many realize time is running out? Amen. The book of Ecclesiastes says to everything, amen, everything, there's a season, there's a time to every purpose under the heaven. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There are two types of time that we understand. Chronos, which we picked up this morning, it designates a period or a space of time. You were supposed to set your clock forward an hour last night, which you did. That's why you are here. I'm expecting in about Oh, 30 more minutes for folk to walk back in the building. Amen. And show up in here thinking, oh, I missed that time. Amen. So Kronos is a designated. Keros is a due measure. It's fixed. It's, a, it's an opportune season of harvest. And we often fall into Keros time. We've had this pandemic. For many, it was a setback. For us, it was a carol. So it was an opportune season of harvest. Our church added people over the last year. It's been an amazing season for us. So to understand that, Jesus was walking in a chronos time. In other words, the parentheses of time of life. But as he walked through that time, he also understood there was a, a uh, Keros moment, a Keros moment of raising Lazarus from the dead, a Keros moment of the lepers who were healed, a Keros moment of Jairus' daughter, Mark chapter 4, amen, being raised. A, a woman with an issue of blood was a Keros moment. You have Keros moments all the time in your life, and believe me, God will set you up. He'll put you into that place where you walk into a moment of time and you go, wow, this is that. You, you just hit it just right each time. When I, when I was hired on at RC Cola, I remember it was a Carol's time in my life. I left the Sonic Restaurant professional burger flipper to go into delivering RC Colas and getting to pray with the Pepsi man. I almost got fired over that one. Amen. But Pepsi took off after that, I'll tell you that much. Amen. So our lifetime is the soil in which our destiny is sown. you got so much soil 
call here to sow the seed of your life into it. Cultivate it and harvest it, our time on earth, if not used properly, will cost us our God-given destiny. My friend, your destiny is expensive. God put you here, paid a price for you to be here. Amen. Use it properly. And how you spend our time on earth ultimately determines what will be recorded about us in eternity. And our time spent with our fathers directly to related, to our, related to our understanding of not only who we are, but what we are here to do. The more time you spend with the Father, the more time you realize why you are here. Why did God choose you to be here? And what is the purpose for you to be here? Amen. You discover that by hanging out with him. I didn't know what I was supposed to do until I hung out with Jesus. Amen. So here we find in John chapter 12, verse 20, and there were certain Greeks among them, and this is one of my favorite seasons of the year as we move toward the cross over the next few weeks. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, and therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip came, and he told Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip, they went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them. Who's he answering here? He's answering the Greeks, saying, The hour has come. See, the Greeks didn't just come to see Jesus. They came to interview him. They wanted to know about him. Greeks were Gentiles. Amen. As Gentiles, they're supposed to have been left out, but Jesus is going to talk to them now. Say, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. And if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also be my servant. If any man, Jew or Greek, Gentile, serve me, him will my father honor. Now, my heart is troubled. My heart is troubled. Hey, David, why are you back there? Bump the AC just a little bit. Hey, man, I looked up here and saw our worship leader sweating. Now I'm thinking, I'm fit to start sweating. Father, save me. Now my heart is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, this moment. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. This is important. In other words, when God spoke out of heaven, can you imagine how far can your voice carry? I said, how far can your voice carry? Amen. I can get on the side of a clear lake and talk and the water carry out through the lake. I can get on a mountainside, Bubba, and yell, my voice will carry. But God spoke from heaven above the stars and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When he said it, every Martian on Mars heard it. <laughs> Everybody on Saturn heard it. Amen. Everybody from the east of time, the angels heard his voice and it, as it moved through. Amen. And said to them, this is my son. I will glorify him. Amen. And Jesus said, that's what for my benefit. Why? Because I know the reason why I'm here. Amen. I came for a purpose and a reason, and I'm going to fulfill it. It's my hour. It's my time. Amen. John 12 and the message says there were some Greeks in town who had come to worship at the feast. They approached Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can you help us? Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered, time's up. Time's up. Amen. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. This morning, I want to talk to you about when time expires. It's going to expire for all of us. I found that this week I have uh, been with three funerals. Dawn, the funeral I was with, with uh, your husband's cousin, Wanda, 60-year-old. 60-year-old, had a heart attack and passed. Amen. There was a little boy that sat on the front row. He was the grandson, eight years old, sat right there on the front row at that funeral. And the mother told me, he's struggling, Pastor, with his grandma passed, and he ought to. I remember being a little boy when, when, when I had relatives that passed. I struggled with it, too. So when I got to that funeral, I looked at that little boy right in the eye, and I said, Hey, buddy, I want to talk to you today. He lit up like a light bulb. 
Amen. He listened to pastor preach. Amen. He caught it. We fist bumped before this whole thing was over. We became buddies, little redheaded thing. Amen. Just, just smiled the whole time trying to figure out, what, where did grandma? Now he knows where grandma's at. Amen. He's figuring this thing out. When I finished the funeral, an older man came up to him. He said, Pastor Jerry, I know you said you were talking to that little boy, but I swear you were preaching to me the whole time. Amen. I picked up something out. He said, I've gone to funerals and didn't get anything out of him. He said, today. He said, where's your church? I said, you don't want to know. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. This entire story happens on Palm Sunday. It represents the beginning of the end, that time was going to expire for Jesus. And all through Scripture, Jesus didn't, it wasn't something that just uh, was sprung on the disciples. As a matter of fact, John records over and over again that Jesus said it. In chapter 2, verse 4, when he started his ministry, he said, Woman, what have I to do with you? Mine hour was not yet come. Talking to his mama, called her woman. Sometimes that'll get you in trouble. John chapter 7, verse 30. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. He hadn't got to the place where it had expired. John chapter 8, verse 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him. Why? Because his hour had not come. When you live by this book, you understand this, that I will not leave this earth until God is finished with me. I will not. When I got on my Harley yesterday and rode up to College Station to watch a little girl play some softball, I remind myself of this book. I ain't leaving this earth till God is done with me. Amen. I don't, my expiration date, whenever it is, and all I'm asking for is what? A heads up. Amen. Just a few minutes, God, would be nice. Seconds would help. Amen. John 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this reason, this cause, I came unto this hour. John 13, 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Chapter 17, verse 1. Again, it's John that keeps throwing this out. Why is it important to understand it's John? Because John was the beloved. He was the one whose head was on the heart of Jesus. He listened to him. He paid attention to him. Do you know a lot of people around Jesus and they don't pay no attention to him? Amen. They want to see him, but they don't want to interview him. Amen. They don't want to just hang out to hear the things he's got to say. So he said to them, Father, the hours come, glorify your son, that thy son also may glorify you. That hour was a predetermined time. It was the chronos of his life that will culminate with the carols of all the things that he's done. The hour was so in the earth, it began to demand or to squeeze out destiny. It was time for Jesus to expire. It was a desirous request quest. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can I tell you something? Before it's too late, make sure you see Jesus. Amen. Make sure you see who he is. If you're watching today, make sure you see him. You understand he's the son of God. Amen. He came to die for us. And in his death, we were going to be resurrected with him. Can I get an amen? Amen. The Greeks, who it came from, and you got to understand the cultural differences. The Greeks were not like the Jews. The totally different attitude about them. The Greeks say they, they were they were not speaking Jewish. They were Gentiles. They were not just Greeks. They were curious. They were uh, of the at the Hebrew feast. They came on a mission. They wanted to see Jesus, but also to interview him. Amen. They were tired of philosophy. I'm tired of philosophy. I'm tired of foolish talking that I'm hearing coming, spouting out of the, the West Coast and out of the East Coast. I'm a mid-coast person. Amen. Here, I like, I like country. I like cornbread. I like honesty. I, like, I don't like hearing foolishness that spouted out of New York and said we need to quit using the terms dad and mom. That's philosophy. That's fo well, who's going to quit saying dad and mom? Just to make uh, uh, one and a half percent of the, keep from offending a half percent of the, the, the United States. I mean, I'm not trying out trying to offend you, but that's my daddy. I ain't going to call him anything other than that. Or my mama, I'm not going to call her anything other than that. Amen, just to make you happy. And we walk through this thing where it's, it's like a culture war going on. So when the Greeks showed up, amen, they, you know, uh, several times they did. At his birth, who do you think the wise men were? 
They were Greeks. They were, they were Gentiles that showed up to see him. The woman at the table that asked for the crumb, amen, that her daughter may be healed. The Syrophoenician woman, she's Greek, amen. So these people kept interfacing into his life. Remember the demon-possessed man from Decapolis? Amen. The lunatic? Yeah, he was from the Decapolis means ten Greek cities. He was Greek, and Jesus delivered him from the devils that were in his life. 1 Corinthians 1, says, For the Jews require a sign. The Jews want a sign. There are a lot of people looking for signs and wonders. Well, what we want to see is Jesus. Amen. We want to interview him. The Greeks sought for wisdom. Amen. They want to, they, the wisdom is what they're after. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews. It's a stumbling block. Why? It's because they're always trying to look for a sign. But unto the Greeks, it, it looks like foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, is the wisdom of God. Their, dis, uh, their desire displayed. The Jews were looking for a sign. The Greeks were looking for him. Sir, we would see Jesus. They wanted truth. Amen. They were disappointed. They were disillusioned with religion. Amen. They wanted something they had never found. One of the things that I realized every time I do a memorial service and funeral is we were made for something better than this. And as good as this is, amen, as good as having a, a garden, Clanton, amen, th there's going to be something better. I'm always looking for something better. And this has been good. Everybody say good. Amen. God is good. He's good all the time. I've enjoyed life. Hallelujah. This week, my hope and prayer is to be on the snowmobile with one of my grandkids and scare them. Amen. Just want to do that. Hallelujah. Just want to get up there and enjoy life. Hallelujah. Amen. It's been good. But we were created for something better than this. God has things planned for us. And as good as this is, prepare yourself. Amen. For what's to come. So the, the, the request came to Philip. Now, this is why it's funny. It wasn't to Matthew. It wasn't to Peter, James, or John. But it was to Philip. Philip was a Greek. His name is Greek. So when they went to him, they looked for somebody who spoke like them, who had a dialect like them, who understood their culture. So they went to Philip, and they said, hey, we'd like to see Jesus. So Philip goes to Andrew, and Andrew and Philip, they go to Jesus and say, Jesus, these guys want to talk to you. Not only do they want to see you, but they want to make sure that, that you will talk to them a little bit. Now listen, it's amazing when I read this that the disciples decided who would see Jesus? I'm going to say it again. The disciples, the entourage, decided who was going to see Jesus. You decide, disciple of Christ, who going to see Jesus. Amen. That God would use you. To make sure that say, somebody wants to see Jesus, and they're going to talk to you about it. Amen. I want to know who he is. Hallelujah. And if I get to know, that was a good time to start clapping right there. That was just really good preaching. People online want to know if y'all really into this. Amen. All right. All right. That was for them, not for me. Hallelujah. So it's a divine response. If you want to see me, you got to die to yourself. If you want to see me, you got to die to yourself. Verse 23, and Jesus answered him, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. His perspective, Jesus did not say die. He said glorified. Now, let me just make this honestly clear with you. Jesus was not looking forward to the death that he was going to die. You know, I, I sometimes make it sound like I'm looking forward to dying. I'm not. Amen. I just know it's going to happen. It's an inevitability. My time will expire. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I even mentioned last week that, you know, I would like to die instead of getting raptured. A lot of folks want to get raptured because they want to get out of here because of the troubles. Amen. I would like to die, go to be with Jesus, then come back with Jesus, get my body and go back up. That means I get the full course meal. You folks, you're going to get raptured, amen. You get snacked out of here. You don't even get the full course. You don't even know what it's like to get to die. So I just throw it at you. His vision of the hour is positive. It's powerful. It's victorious. Amen. The expiration was a transitional moment. He knew that he would be glorified. To glorify means to render or esteem glorious, manifested excellence. You're fixing to see the excellency of Jesus after his death. May our lives and our death bring him glory. I've often said over and over, God, we live well. Help us to die well. Psalm 116 verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death, the passing of his saints. Amen. Amen. 
this his parable here, if you want to see me, you got to die to yourself. Verse 24, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. Many years ago, as a youth pastor, I had a young boy that was killed, a young man, 16 years old, killed in a car wreck on Sheldon Road. I remember my first, it was my first funeral. My first funeral, I'm 25 years old, and God gives me this scripture. And as that young boy lay there, I preached out of this thought, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. At that time, I had 13 teenagers in my youth group at Channel View Christian Center. 13 teenagers. And I preached this message about this young boy who died. And I said, do not allow Sh Sean's life to be in vain. Sean McClain, don't let his life be in vain. Amen. With corn dying going to the ground, it abides alone. But if it goes down and, and germinates, it will bring forth much fruit. Amen. And from that meeting, I had around 300 teenagers at my first funeral. Our youth group exploded. They didn't all come to the church after that. But a large multitude of them did. And they went out and began to pull in other kids. And that little youth group went from 13 to 120 kids in just a few months. Amen. I, I, did, I didn't quite know how to handle it. It was, it was, uh, they were the misfits. They were the misfits. They had hair down to here. Some of them came in with spandex on. Y'all don't remember spandex in the uh, 80s, do you? Amen. I know them little biker shorts. Y'all see them out there wearing? These teenagers come in there. They wear spandex, all different color, hair. Some of you women, your hair, you were just so jealous of these guys. Their hair was long down to here. They, they were in hippie bands. Amen. I, I thought, man, look at this opportunity I got. I grabbed that band, had, had a band with them, and um, called Straightway. And uh, we, I took those guys out to Montrose and Westheimer. You didn't bring them down to Uvalde and I-10. That wasn't going to help. Amen. To, well, down to Westheimer and Montrose. And there was a club down there called Numbers. Amen. And we went down there and we was hanging out like a Dr. Hook band. Amen. With all the, all the, uh, the transvestite. I didn't know what a transvestite I was then. Amen. Until he started talking to me. Amen. And then I realized, that ain't a woman. Amen. That's a man with an Adam's apple. And, and we started witnessing and sharing the gospel. And people were giving their lives to Jesus. And turned that man. You know, I saw God crazy stuff happened but we were just using the gospel it all started with corn that went into the ground that died that day we made sure that his life was not in vain I would preach in that high school, Clanton. I know that's where you coach ball at. I'd preach in that high school, and, and crazy things would happen in the classroom, and, and the kids would get all excited and start yelling. Teachers would run in thinking the kids were against me, only to find out I was just preaching and they were for me. Amen. It happened over and over again. I saw great. I, I was with somebody the other day that mentioned, they said, Pastor, I was there. Well, who was I with the other? Uh, I was there when you came to the, uh, to the party. A party. On, uh, it was on I-10 at one of the hotels. I found out the kids were throwing an after school, uh, after football game party. And some of my teenagers that had just given their life to Christ were at that party. Now, just because you get born again don't mean everything's good in your life. So I went to the party, knocked on the door. It was packed. There was, there was Richard Rodriguez there. There was Thomas Herrera was there. All, all these kids were in there. And I, I knocked on the door, and they opened it, and, and there was smoke filled the room. They had a tub full of liquor. Amen. The girls in there and guys up in there. When I knocked on the door, this was right after this corn had died and went into the ground. And this, this young man, as a matter of fact, this young man goes to our second service. He's in our second service. He said, Pastor, I was at that party when you came in. And I walked in. They pulled me in the middle of the room. And they shut. They made everybody put the smokes up. Amen. The weed up. Uh, the, the liquor up. And they said, listen, this is, bro, they call me Brother Jerry. This is Brother Jerry. He's over the youth uh, at Channel View. Amen. Listen to him. And then they sat back, made all them kids listen to me. Amen. Had them double rooms and doors open up, and I preached the gospel to those guys. Amen. Got in about, got in about five minutes. That's all I preached. No, five minutes. Five minutes. You don't want to overkill something like that. You do. You in trouble. Amen. You start boring them, they're going to hurt you. Preach it left. Some of them kids started coming to church. Death, my friend, is the key to spiritual fruitfulness. I'm going to tell you, it, this was a physical death that Sean had died, but we have to die daily. It's a daily death. 
You know, I, I go and uh, I rehab, work out. I remind myself, you're dying a daily death. You've got to put this old man down. Uh, there are things you got to do. You, you just don't get to do what you used to get to do. Amen. I want to make sure that I give God glory. Apart from his death, his life stands in isolation with no power of increase. But he's fixing to, to die here. Therefore, amen, uh, the multiplication comes with decomposition. I looked at the word decomposition. Decomposition. You see that? And I realized that means to lower your position, to humble yourself, to prepare yourself for the ground. Amen. So there would be multiplication. If I eat the corn, that's all I get. But if I plant the corn, multiplication will come. And if I, if I, if I die, Jesus understood this. Uh, Isaiah said, I'll have many sons. Amen. Many sons and daughters through his death. Amen. The word death here and die, the whole body or substance of the grain except the germ. The germ is the spirit. That's who you are, your spirit. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Dies in the earth or is decomposed. And this decomposed substance constitutes the first nourishment of the tender germ, a nutrient wonderfully adapted to it, and fed it and nourished it until it becomes vigorous enough to derive its support entirely from the ground. In this God has shown his wisdom and goodness. No one thing could be more evidently fitted for another than this provision made in the grain itself for the future wants of the tender germ. Therefore, in order to live, we die to ourselves. Let me just help you out. When you die to yourself, there are times that you feel like you are in the dark. There are times you feel like dirt is being shoveled on top of you. There are times that people don't understand what it is that you're doing. That you are fasting. You are praying. You are giving things over to God. The things you used to do, you're not doing them no more. All of a sudden, addictions are falling off. Your language is clearing up. There's a desire to help people, and you never helped them before. You never did anything for them before. But now you are releasing things out of your life, and you're being a blessing to others. There is a transformation, a born-again experience taking place in your life, and it seems seems like there are times that you will go through a dark time and the dirt's being shoveled on you. Don't, don't you be a, a despaired at that time, germ. Because now you are decomposing and the old you is dying away and the new you is coming out. Amen. I have marveled, I have marveled at, at how a, a sprout will pop up through the cracks of concrete. I marvel how trees grow in, in a gutter. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You look up at somebody's gutter, and they got a tree growing from it. And they wonder why it stopped up. I, I marvel at how God, the power of the sprout and the germ. And Jesus said, when I die, I will give him glory. Amen. Let me close with this. this Jesus, and again, I'm not telling you that he looked forward to it, but he knew that his time was going to expire. I remember a song. Uh, I want to be running when the sands of time run out. You know, I often think about how this thing's going to end. I do. You know, I, again, three funerals just this week. 60-year-old, 57-year-old, 23-year-old. You don't know when time is going to expire. You've been with loved ones and family and friends. You were there when their time expired. We all have. The older you get, you, you, you understand it. But God, I, you left me here for a purpose and a reason. Jesus said, should I drink of this cup of suffering? This is a cup. Even though he, it, when you read this, it sounds so victorious when he's talking to the Greeks. By the time we get in the, near the end of the Gospels, Matthew 22, 23, 24, we realize the struggle is on. Amen. The fight is on. That's why he prayed three times in the garden. Not my will. But thine be, gone, be done. But he asked, yeah, man, I would sure like for this cup. You know what he's asking for? More time. If you've ever seen the humanness of Jesus, it's at the end of his life when he said, Give me, Can you just get a little more time? And I'll hear songs if I could just get one more day, one more hour. When that time expires, it's over. And Jesus went through three things he recalled. To recall is to back up, to, to pull back in. First, he understood the trouble of the physical, the scourging, the pain. Isn't it amazing the receptors in your body, how it reacts to pain? If you've got nerve issues, you know what I'm talking about. 
Amen. The pain to shoot through your body. It hurts. But to think about what Jesus went through is mind-blowing. The cat of nine tails that lashed his back and opened up his flesh. The piercing of his brow with the thorns, the spittle in his face, moved down to the mental part. So physically, he's, he's bleeding out. Mentally, he knew of Judas' betrayal, Peter's denial, that the disciples were going to leave him. That mental part of life when you realize that those that you have loved and poured your life into are going to walk away. And the spiritual part, he who knew no sin, the Bible says, became sin. There ought to be such a deep appreciation in the church of God for the love of Jesus. One of my favorite scriptures is that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. To know that, to understand that he went to the bitter bottom of that cup. When he's on the cross, and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with all of this later in depth. When he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He knew what was coming. And he recalled. He uses this verse, this saying in verse 27. But for this cause came I into this hour. For this cause Everybody say, I'm the cause. Come on, say it again. You're the reason. You are the reason he came. You're the reason that he recalled. You're the reason he died. Amen. For this cause came I into this hour. I came here for a purpose. When you live your life in understanding that I won't die, I'll be transitioned. I wasn't born, I was sent. You see how you... It changes your, your thinking. You know, when you have three adopted children, you got to help them understand that they were not just born, that God sent them here, that they were not mistakes. Are you hearing me? And every child that was born, they're not mistakes. God put them here. And all you got to do is change the way you think. You lose your stinking thinking. Amen. It'll shift your whole paradigm. And next thing you know, now you got a destiny. You got a legacy to build. You got a reason to be here. And you understand his cause. Let me say this in closing find your cause before your time runs out. Grandpa, Grandma, Mom, Dad, kids, find your cause. Your reason for being here. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour? No. But for this cause, I came into this hour. There's coming a time that time will expire. It's going to happen. I pray that when my time expires, you understand. He, he came, he found his cause, and he's gone. I pray I'm able to say the same thing over you. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, let us search ourselves this morning. Let us reach way down and realize how petty we've allowed certain things to run our lives. Let us, let us run with the Word of God. Let us understand we were sent here. Let us understand there's a cause for us to discover. Let us spend time with you to understand the why we're here and what to do while we're here. God, don't let anything distract us, pull us away from that. God, I thank you for your life. I, Jesus, I thank you for the life you lived here, for the understanding we grasp from it. Now let us have a week of pondering the Scriptures, pondering the reason. And God, help us to connect with others. Let us be that which die. We don't have to die right now physically, but let us die to ourselves that you may live through us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Man, I wish I could preach to the whole world. Amen. And I think through the online, we're able to reach so many more people. But you got to share it. you got to keep connecting with folk. I wonder what's next. This time last year. I saw a post that I made from this time last year. The pandemic, the pan, pandemonium. And everything I said then came true during the year. Saw it coming. 
Amen. Sorry coming. But I thank God for our church. Amen. You guys have loved one another, cared for one another, connected one another. And it's going to be up to you to reach out to people you may not have seen lately, to connect with them, to love them. Help folk understand, look, all of us have an expiration date. Amen. All of us has a, have a time. I don't know of any other preacher who talks more about dying than me. But I talk about dying for one reason, to help you learn to live. Amen. And if you know what's inevitable, my goodness, you're going to live. You're going to keep on pressing through. Amen. There's an opportunity to give this morning. Amen. If you're watching online, you can give through our holywild.net. Amen. I think there's a place uh, slash give there. Yeah, there's often envelopes in front of you. David, there's quite a few announcements on here. Amen. That I see that we need to pay attention to. Uh, my prayer was for Pastor Mike to be here next month. His uh his wife, Sister Patty, is still not doing well, so I will have a special guest speaker next month for us on our first week, Keith, first week midweek, amen. So whatever that first week falls on that Tuesday, it'd be Tuesday when Keith showed up for church Wednesday night by himself, amen. So I'm glad he had church by himself, amen, but don't forget, we don't have church. By the way, there is church here on Tuesday night, amen, two or more gather here and pray and every Tuesday. You know, I, I feel... I feel the difference in that prayer, too. Amen. I feel the difference in this pulpit, in our worship. Amen. With the connection of people. Keep right on praying. Carl, is this y'all's last Sunday? Y'all supposed to told me that. Y'all stand up right there. Hallelujah. You two going to be gone? Y'all moving to Madisonville? We're going to miss y'all. James, we're going to miss them. Amen. Annie, we'll miss them. Y'all been a blessing. Amen. At the door. Y'all came in, and y'all really got involved in this house, and I appreciate that. Amen. Stretch your hands. Amen. Father, we ask you to bless the mother, bless her son. God, we thank you for the Spirit of God being upon them as they move to Madisonville. We're asking for you to give them a body of believers to connect with, there that they can grow and love and, and learn more. We pray, God, as they move forward, that you'd prosper them and you'd bless them. Lord, it's, it's, uh, the transition always causes friction. So we're praying for the oil of the Holy Ghost to be upon this move. Lord, it'll be as smooth as possible. We thank you for your mercies. We send them out as missionaries of the little country church god that they would share the gospel of jesus amen for everybody that they meet and you help them to respond to in jesus name amen 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 <laughs> david amen that's precious All right, we got March 14th. It's going to be swapped. That's going to be today. I uh, see Miss Linda and Ken. Anything y'all need? Want them to know? Come hang out. Have some coffee. I saw them bringing in a ton of refreshments and, and food. I think anything that riches are involved in, there's always food that accompanies them. God, that's right. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so you guys go hang out. Um, and that's just seniors with a purpose. And that's just anybody that wants to get involved. Just come back. They're teaching on the word. Um, anything you guys teaching on in particular? Uh, we're in Second, Thessalonians chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one. That's a good place to go. Um, so yeah, just go hang out with them today after service. Uh, now March... Now through March 28th will be the Children's Easter Activities. Donation for the Children's Easter Activities now being accepted. Money, bags of Easter candy, or small toys donated to Sheila Ibram for Easter Sunday. See Miss Sheila in the back of the church uh, on your way out. Miss Sheila, anything you want to say? Is there any stipulations? No chocolate or anything of that way? Everything and anything. Amen. I like that no chocolate rule because then I, I got some. Now now the kid's going to eat all my chocolate. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> That'd be better for y'all parents. Trust me, I know. It's fun. Get them sugared up and then you're like, no, just sit still, please. <laughs> no? No, right, maybe just me. All right. March 19th through the 23rd it will be a major road closure. Um March 21st, Sunday for the church, uh, FM 2100 at 1960, road closed. Prepare for extra drive time for detour. Um, research your alternate routes around this major intersection. This is a service announcement. <laughs> so if y'all coming in from that way, 
It's going to be close. And honestly, I don't. I, are we going to have to take 90 around? I don't. Well, I just said 1960 is closed, so. Old Atascacita Road around. Okay, off of 1960 and Old Atascacita Road. Yeah, because if the railroad's closed, that means I can't get through. I'm going to have to take a right and then go around. Got it. Beltway 8. Beltway 8 to 90. Okay. It said research it. If y'all coming from that way, you're going to have to find it. <laughs> they got Google Maps for that. Uh, March 21st, Live Ladies in Fellowship Together. Uh, the third Sunday every month, Ladies Bible Study. See Diane Phelan for details. Um, anything you guys in particular you want to talk about? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. Good. All right. And is that the Francine Rivers? Is that who wrote that book? Francine Rivers? It's a good book. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, ladies, uh, come hang out with them. Find out what's going on. Like you said, they're walking through the uh, the women of the Bible. And, uh, I mean, obviously, any anybody that was mentioned, especially as a woman in the Bible, pay attention. That means they've done something because it was generally structured around men in the Eastern time. So understand that if a woman gets mentioned in the Bible, she was doing something. Pay attention. Uh, March 18th, Camp Holy Wild Maintenance Day. Um, meet Thursday, 8 a.m. through noon. Pick up sticks and clean up Camp Holy Wild. Uh, Camp Holy Wild needs maintenance. The OCDs and everyone welcome to come and help. Uh, many hands make light work. Weather alternative date will be Saturday, March the 20th. Call Neil Smith. Um, call Neil over there. Just come. It's this Thursday. Uh, come hang out. We're just picking up six, getting ready for the mowing season. Um, normally we have a muscle car at this time, so that normally gets done during that time, but uh, it's not going to happen until later in the year, so we're going to have a, a work day, an alternate work day. Um, to be able to kind of subsidize for that. Uh, March 27th, TLCC Ignite Preteen Skate Day. Um, Saturday, March the 27th is 1 through 3 p.m. Humble Family Skate Center, 5th and 6th grade. New Caney and Crosby campuses invited to come. Contact Marley Clayton for additional information. Um, and um, that's just for preteens. Kids getting ready to come into the youth groups. We're just trying to get them ready so that they understand and recognize what's going to happen from where they're at now and, and helping with that transition so they don't jump out of, out of Sunday school and then jump right into, preteen, into the teenagers and they're like, what are you guys talking about? So that's just to help with that smooth transition. Uh, July 12th through the 14th, TLCC Kids Summer Camp. Again, we are already set the dates. That will be July 12th through the 14th, um, TLCC Kids Summer Camp. Obviously, we're just getting ready for that. There's going to be... Uh, all kinds of things that are needed for that, and we understand that. Um, but we want our kids to have a good time. We understand that COVID has been going on, but we also know that there are a lot of children outside of our church and in our church that need to meet with God. <laughs> I don't care what disease is out there, that's more important, amen, that our kids begin to see and understand and recognize the power of God in their own lives. Not just in mom and dad's life, not just in grandma and grandpa's life, that they begin to recognize and understand salvation is for them, not just for the people that are above them. Amen. And so we just want to introduce them to Christ and, and so that their lives will be changed. Destinies will be affected. That's what we want. That's what we're striving for. Again, you can give online. Um, that's at holywild.net. There's a spot on the top just says give. Hit the give it's very simple. I've been doing it for a long time. It's a lot easier. Just click, click, click. Done. It's very, very simple. Anything else? Yeah. 
Tuesday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you're gonna be here at seven. Doesn't doesn't the service start at seven? On Tuesday, it starts at seven. So, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm, I'm asking because I wanted to make sure that we understood that. So, do you want them to come early? And maybe meet in the fellowship hall. Six thirty. I, 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 you know me. You're the boss, ain't you? He, go, he gonna figure it out. He go, he gonna go to the drawing board and come back with us. Uh, but, but, yeah, that's right. That was the drawing board. D, <laughs> D is the drawing board. That stands for drawing board. <laughs> but, uh, it's important, guys. Again, we, we just getting together. Corporate prayer is such a huge thing. And for us to be able to meet together, to pray together, to strengthen one another, to uh, be there. And again, put your prayer requests in the back. They can't pray for you if they don't know. And so uh, keep doing that. I know they've been praying. Hopefully we've been getting some testimonies from that. And maybe something else that we can put on the website so that people understand, okay, when I do it, it actually happens. It's not just, you know, for fun. So that's a good thing. Well, I love you guys. Anything else? Man, I feel like I just sped forever on that thing. All right. Thank you, Lord. We made it. Jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Settlements. Inheritance. Rebates in return. Debts demolished. Royalties received. Favor and success to the kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would bless every giver in this house, that they would have a blessed week, and that, Lord, you are still the author and finisher of our faith. Let us look to you this week. Lord, you are our source. Lord, let us not to give more, more preference to resources, but rather just to continue to go to the source. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.